What's up, Hacksplainers? Today I'm having an exciting episode for you because we are going to have a look at the new OWASP Top 10. And I'm speaking of the 2021 edition. And why is this so exciting? Because we all love the OWASP Top 10 categorization. And yeah, let's have a look together at the new edit. Before I'm going to start, actually kudos to OWASP and all the people who contributed to that list. It's definitely totally up to them. I had nothing to do with it, but I want to present it to you right now. And let's have a look at the list straight away. So what we are seeing is this new page of theirs with actually a new design that says OWASP Top 10. And yeah, what we do see is that they have created this new draft, but it's not finished yet. So that's one big disclaimer right over here. I am demonstrating a draft to you right now, not the final product. But I'm pretty sure the final product is pretty much going to look like the draft. This is why we're going to have a look at it today. And let's jump straight into this first image over here. So what we have is a few where we see the OWASP Top 10 in 2017 and the new list in 2021. And the orange items, they were actually moving down a little bit. So there is less occurrences in vulnerabilities these days. The green ones, they on the other hand, they were moving up. The yellow ones, they were kind of moved into a, a new category or into an existing one but it was renamed to a new name. And if we have a look right now, so Injection was going down from one to three in 2021. Um, Program authentication was going down to seven. We have sensitive data exposure going up to rank number two. We have XML external entities, which kind of lost its state as its own category and was merged into security misconfiguration on rank number five. Broken access control went all the way up. So we have a new winner over here. Actually, that is our number one rank vulnerability in the 2021 OWASP top 10 list. Security cut misconfiguration went from six to five. So a slight increase. Cross-site scripting was once again moving up. Like it actually dropped in the 2017 one to rank number seven, but now it's all the way back up but it has been merged to the injection category on rank number three. We have insecure deserialization. That was just moved to a new name, but stayed at the same spot. We have using components with known vulnerabilities that moved up from nine to six. And we have insufficient logging and monitoring that moved from 10 to nine. And if all of that sounds a little cryptic right now, we're going to have a look at all those individual categories and i want to show you the first one which is broken access control i want to point out over here is the map cwes and we will talk about those in a bit but we have 34 and i want to quickly talk about what that is so we do see in the description section that over here we're talking about bypassing access controls allowing the primary key to be changed to another user's record, elevation of privilege, metadata manipulation, course misconfiguration, false browsing, and much more. So another word that is often used for what we see over here is called an IDOR or an insecure direct object reference. But let's see if we scroll down a little bit what the CWEs are that are included in broken access control. And we do see over here, path traversal, relative path traversal, permission issues, improper access control. We see CSERF, we see direct request force browsing, and a lot more. Because I am using this word CWE all the time already in this video without letting you know what it is, I wanna quickly jump over here, quick, word on CWE. Basically that is standing for Common Weakness Enumeration, and it is a community developed list of software and hardware weakness types. So that's actually way older than the OS top 10 out of 2021. You can check it out. They have like a total weakness count of 922, 22, that's right, yeah. And if you click on it, you can 
navigate them by different criteria. For example, you can say, I want to check out the OWASP top 10. And then you have a list of all the CWEs right over here. I'm not going into detail right now in this video. Make sure to check it out though, because it's super interesting to read. And there's a lot of information that goes along with it once you go into the individual CWEs. But let's move on to our category number two. And here we're having cryptographic failures, shifting up one position to number two. We're speaking about um, vulnerabilities like is any data transmitted in clear text? Are there weak cryptographic algorithms in use? Any default crypto keys in use? Is encryption enforced? And so on. Quickly going down to the map CWEs, we do see once again cryptographic issues, clear text clear text transmission of sensitive information, use of hard-coded cryptographic keys, and a lot of other stuff. All right, let's have a look at the next one. And we are speaking about injection. Injection was actually sliding down to the third position. We do see a total of 33 map CWEs. And what do we have in here? We have users applied data is not validated, dynamic queries on non-parametrized calls without context-aware escaping, hostile data used in object relational mapping, and so on. Sounds a little hard. Let's have a look at the CWEs to make this a little easier. All right, what do we have in here? We do have command injection. We do have OS command injection, cross-site scripting. We do have SQL injection. We have LDAP injection. We have CRLF injection, code injection, I could go on forever. You already see this category is named injection for a reason because it literally contains any injection vulnerability that you can think of. And as there are a lot in modern day web applications, this is still ranked number three. All right, let's have a look at the next one. We are looking at insecure design. And this is a new category. And with that, it's a little harder to describe what it is, but it basically says insecure design is a broad category representing many different weaknesses expressed as missing or ineffective control design. Or to sum it up, missing insecure design is where a control is absent. I don't wanna go with a full description right now, but let's once again look at the map CWEs. We do see, for example, external control of file names or paths, a permissive list of allowed inputs, exposure of sensitive information due to incompatible policies, clear text storage of sensitive information, unprotected primary channel, and much more. All right, with that, let's have a look at the next one. And here we do have security misconfiguration ranked number five. Moving up from position six, actually, with vulnerabilities like missing appropriate security hardening, unnecessary features which are enabled, default accounts and their passwords enabled, error handling that re reveals stack traces, and all of that juicy stuff. Once again, I want to quickly take you to the CWEs. What are we having over here? We do see ASP.NET misconfigurations. We see Java random error messages. We see use of hard-coded security relevant constants and much more with that let's have a look at the next one and here we're speaking of vulnerable and outdated components and this is obviously all about components that you use usually third-party components that are not getting updated so you should always know the versions of the components you use have them updated patching is important let me tell you that and Quickly looking at the CWEs, there's only three mapped CWEs, and here we have using components with known vulnerabilities, using components with known vulnerabilities. It's funny because it's two times in there, and use of unmaintained third-party components. What else would you have expected, right? All right, let's have a look at the next one. Next up, AO7 identification and authentication failures with a staggering number of 22 CWEs. And here we do have, for example, if brute force 
attacks are permitted, if the default weak or well-known passwords are permitted, if the app uses plain text, if there is uh, ineffective multi-factor authentication controls in place, and much more. Let's scroll down to the CWEs. What do we have to choose here? here? Improper authentication, authentication bypass using an alternate path or channel, improper certificate validation. Make sure to validate your certificates. Otherwise, it just doesn't make sense. Session fixation. That is such a classic one. Haven't found any of those in a while, but still in there. Let's make sure to check all those out once you test an application. Let's have a look at rank number eight. And here we do have software and data integrity failures. That is also a new category in the 2021 OWASP top 10 list. And it says software and data integrity failures relate to code and infrastructure that does not protect against integrity violations. 10 map CWEs. And here we do have stuff like missing support for integrity check, insufficient verification of data authenticity, download of code without integrity check, and much more. Deserialization of untrusted data, actually. That is a good one. I like a good deserialization vulnerability. Let's have a look together at rank number nine. And here we do have security logging and monitoring failures. So this actually came back into the 2021 list. It's when auditable events such as logins, failed logins, etc., are not logged. If warnings and errors generate no inadequate or in unclear log messages, if logs are only stored locally but not on any sort of log server, and yeah, we do have four mapped CWEs on this one with improper output neutralization for logs, insufficient logging, and the two other ones that we see on the screen. All right, you know what? The always top 10 is called top 10 because it has 10 entries. And this is why I am going to show you one more before we're going to wrap this up. And let's have a look at rank number 10. And look at that. Here we have server side request forgery, SSRF, everybody's favorite darling with a blasting amount of one map CWE. And I mean, do I even have to explain you what SSRFs are? Everybody loves them. It's a flaw that occurs whenever a web app is fetching a remote resource without validating the user supplied URL. So if I, for example, say, let's get this AWS map data and you say, yeah, sure. Here you have it, take it, have fun with it. That's not what we want to have. And yeah, scrolling down to the CWEs, who would have thought that it's a CWE 918 called server side request forgery. And yeah, with that, I want to actually conclude the OS top 10 of 2021. Thank you very much, OS, for providing this excellent information. I know that I have not used a lot of my own words in this video. I hope you don't mind that. But yeah, let's make sure to check all web apps or whatever you pand this against the OWASP Top 10 2021. Let's give it a bit more time until the trough becomes a final release. But I'm pretty sure there's not much that is going to change. And with that, like I said, Make sure to use this as your guide. Go like this video, subscribe in the top right corner, and thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon.